Hi everyone, today's video is about my favorite courses at McGill University. I'll be listing five different courses I've taken over the years and speak about the different experiences and the different takeaways I had from those respective courses. I've only studied at McGill for five academic semesters. So this list is bound to change and I'm probably going to add more courses to this list down the line. But it's always great to kind of like look back and recap and see what we've learned along the way. And if you haven't reached this channel before, my name is Manit Kultunga and I speak about how students could get to and through university. If you do enjoy listening and hearing and kind of like reliving different student experiences, please hit the subscribe button. I really appreciate it seeing that I am still a small channel trying to grow. Let's get back into the content at hand. I'll not be listing these courses in any particular order, but the first course that comes to mind when I think about my favorite courses would be the introduction to data science course that I took in fall 2020. The course code is COMP589. And I was one of these lucky students who was able to kind of like enroll in this class. And I think this is that class where I got a firm understanding of what data science is and what it takes to build a great data science project. And you know, the professor very diligently and very nicely went through the different techniques that it, that a good data scientist can kind of like use in uh, their respective kind of professions. And you know, when you have any of these very hyped up famous fields, something you realize is there are a lot of buzzwords thrown around and, and you know, like people are mixing things like data analytics with data science and machine learning with data science. And for the first time, you know, I got a firm fundamental understanding of what data science is. I'm very happy to actually have a course like that in the CS kind of like world because what you see with CS courses in general is that it's not really that practical and it's very theoretical. And even though there are advantages to, you know, theoretical CS courses, I think when you, once you have a lot of practical courses, people could actually put these like lessons into practical usage and, you know, like really like push their careers forward. So I'm very, very, very appreciative of this course that uh, that I took. It, it really just helped me think of the different stages of a data science project and how someone could think to these processes and it really like added a level of thinking and a little level of critical like thinking that i didn't have before i took that course so that that kind of like left me very happy so like i think it's very important for people to look back and think about the different lessons they learn and how they got smart after taking a course because uh, it's always great to reflect and just like know what you've learned so that's that and the second course that comes to mind would be research essay and rhetoric that's CEAP 250 for anyone interested. That was probably the most unique experience I had in terms of a CS student. I took it in my first semester, so I was, you know, very introverted or whatever, but it was a very discussion oriented class. And that's not an experience that a lot of CS students have because, you know, you're stuffed into a room with like, you know, 200 to 300 students. So you don't have like a, a huge back and forth with like a professor or like the different peers that you have. You really just learn your stuff and just like get out of class. That's the honest experience that a lot of students have at like most universities and a lot of people don't really mention it, but like, you know, that's not my job here. <laughs> anyway, I, it was it was very interesting in the sense that I learned how to like write better in terms of like any writing that I've ever had. Like I realized when I look back at the writing that I've had, I had a lot of technical jargon in it or just like jargon in general, like jargon related to the topic I was writing in general. And it helped me filter out my thoughts and just like, you know, have high impact in terms of, you know, what I what I put on paper and like what I publish in general. I really like, you know, we, we kind of revised and went through the different grammar rules that are there and the different referencing techniques that are there for, there for research papers. And it helped me kind of like navigate myself around like the writing world. And it, once again, just help me set myself apart from different CS students because a lot of CS students don't really have that level of thinking in terms of writing and communication. And this class really challenged me to like participate and just you know, communicate my thoughts and communicate my arguments. And this really helps at work because these are soft skills that you don't learn from like a very technical CS degree. Uh, obviously those technical skills matter, but like certain things like this, certain taking certain classes like this really help, you know, set you know, it helps you to kind of like be different from the general application pool that goes into, goes out to like the job market for sure. The third course that comes to mind would be Comp 303. That's a software design class. I also took it in fall 2020. Uh, that was also a relatively practical class, but you know, the theory learn that I learned in it is like, that's when I realized that I've, I'm very much in love with 
the real essence of programming and like the real essence of like software design and development in general um, and it gave me a chance to work with different people in a group project uh, I, I initially had like reservations when it came to that and obviously there are certain disadvantages that come with doing group projects but for me personally I just learned how beautiful it is to just like work with different people on the same kind of like problem and that's kind of like how it is going to be at work right you're, you're going to be solving problems and you're going to be talking to people who approach these problems at different angles and the biggest takeaway from that course is that you know in general when you have like a soft like a software problem like you have a solution to it sure and even those solutions could have variations but the added layer to that is that there's design there are different design pathways that that people could take for this and these design pathways don't really have a right or wrong. It's not very binary like anything else in CS. There is no right or wrong way to go about it. But in essence, there are there are certain costs and benefits that you need to kind of account for uh, for different de design patterns. And it really like pushed me to think about certain code samples in a different way. Before I took the course, I was just like churning out code and just like writing code and you know looking at you know code as just like a brute force way of just like solving a problem. But when I took the design course, I realized, okay, there's an additional layer of kind of like thinking about uh, di different design patterns. And this helped me at work much more. Obviously, like there are certain things I learned at work in terms of design and just like knowing how to format someone else's code. But once I took this course, course I had like a very formal understanding and academic understanding of what software design and architecture really kind of like has. They went over design, different design patterns all the way from the basic like object-oriented programming codes to like things like decorators and things like singleton classes and things like that. And uh, you know, that really just added another dimension to my CS student career. And I think a lot of CS students should definitely take this course just because, you know, these these thinking skills could definitely like help you down the line. And it, it obviously comes up in like interviews and things of that nature. So. Yeah, it, it definitely helps a lot of people down the line. And uh, the, the fourth course that comes to mind is a general chemistry two course. That's Chem 120. You'd obviously be wondering why I took a chemistry course and why it would remain as a, one of my favorite courses. So obviously it has zero impact on my career, like literally none. Like I, I don't benefit from learning chemistry at all. I don't remember anything I learned really. Um, but I did get an A for, for the class, but I don't remember anything I did, but it was, nice and it was very interesting just because i didn't take chemistry in high school and we are supposed to do like freshman requirements for like any of the faculties that we we take and this is like a common norm in canada and i think even in the us you'll be doing something like a core curriculum right so this was part of those requirements and uh, i got physics exempted but i couldn't get chemistry exempted because i didn't take it in high school and I was going to take a bio course instead and I realized, okay, like I'm not going to memorize stuff in bio, like that part of me is just like dead ever since I came to university. So I just shifted to taking chemistry instead. Um, and this was the harder chemistry course from like the freshman courses that I had. So if you, if you do need to complete your science requirement, definitely take chem, one, chem 110 and not chem 120, which is what I did, which is stupid, like just don't do it if you have the choice that is. Anyway, like this was a very mathematical course, right? So I didn't feel like I was doing a chemistry course and like, you know, if I was studying anything, it was just uh, like just to kind of like establish context. And I was just like playing with this course in the sense that whenever I went to the course, I looked at it from a very mathematical angle and I might have not even known the content, but I was able to like figure out the questions very easily just like by using mathematics and just like understanding ratios and just like understanding like like I, I basically just like it was most MCQ exam. So like I just used like elimination to just like arrive at the most suitable answer. That's basically what I did through the entire course. I didn't really understand anything that was going on, but I got an A because I was able to just like know what was really off and what was not that off and what was like great as an answer. That's basically what I learned. And, and it really helped me kind of like understand how to hack a course. Just because sometimes you know you're not in the position to like know absolutely everything in a course to like score well on a course. It's just not possible when you're having such a big, large, stressful stretch of work when it comes to university. So you need to be able to kind of like find the different tricks and ways to like do great on exams. And this once again goes to prove that 
you know exams don't really define how great of an intellectual you are because i took an a for that course and i'm probably the worst chemist in the world there was a lab uh, there was lab element to it so that there was like additional work over there and i was able to work with like a very like sweet lab partner she really guided me through the entire process and like i was confused like 75% of the time but like she really helped me out with the entire process just fun to just be at a lab and just like do all this stuff like it's not once again it's not going to add anything to my career but it was what such a fun experience i mean once i look back i actually didn't have those lab courses when it comes to um uh just like cs there's no equipment and things of that nature so it was very fun to just do that for sure the fifth course that comes to mind would be com 206 that is the introduction to software systems yeah and uh, the reason is because it was just like a mash up like a remix of a lot of different cs topics and uh, this was the first time i learned c and i realized that yeah i'm not going to get into things like embedded computing because like, i don't want to like dabble in c it's a cool language and it's a very useful language and it's very like low level i really understood like how the computer works and like you know how to use unix and things of that nature you know there were different technologies like git and github and even even things like html and css i was like wow this is an entire mash up of different topics so that was just like really cool and i think a lot of cs students will benefit from it i already knew this stuff because i you know just like self studied and did things like that this would just like give like a nice introduction to like a a variety of topics that they could like specialize with like later or they could or different tools that they could use for their personal work at any point in time yeah this was basically just like a relatively casual video of just me thinking about the different courses that i've taken and what i like uh there is a layer of con- complexity that i could add to these courses and you know i'm bound to take much more difficult courses down the line or at least like much more fun courses and like much more uh like much more specific courses down the line but this was like i guess a nice mix of courses that like a lot of people could uh, or at least a de- decent chunk of people could relate to and uh, yeah i hope someone got a decent value in terms of um you, you know be relating and just like understanding experiences of the magil in general um i hope you have a great day and if you did enjoy this video please subscribe and watch the rest of this the videos on this channel uh, i i'm sure you'll gain value from some of it <laughs> thank you and once again have a good